tired. So I know I haven't been posting in two weeks. That's my fault. I've been so focused on real estate. Nonetheless, I've been wanting to make this video for you about what is escrow. And I'm going to also go in depth of a couple escrow terms. So let's get started. Now, I'm sure you've driven by homes in your neighborhood and have seen the sign in escrow. And you probably didn't think much of it, right? Or you might've asked yourself, what is escrow while driving by? And then you're like, ah, whatever, and just kept driving. Cause I know I have. <laughs> now in this video, I'm going to share with you what exactly is escrow. That way you have a better understanding of it. And the next time you see an in escrow sign and someone asks you, what exactly does that mean? Well, you already know what's up, all right? So escrow is, for lack of better terms, a third party, a neutral third party, who handles a bilateral agreement between a buyer and a seller. And a bilateral agreement just means that there's a promise for a promise. That's all it means. Once the buyer and the seller have come to an agreement, the house now goes under contract and is handled by a neutral third party, which is escrow. All right. Now to create an escrow, the buyer puts their money in the escrow and the seller puts the deed of the house in the escrow. And then all escrow does is just switch it over and that's it. So this is not legally required. Escrow is not legally required. And if you think you've learned something so far, smash the like button because it helps out for the YouTube algorithm and it helps out my channel a ton. Plus it's totally free. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks. Now, when people say, oh, I opened escrow, that just means they have a binding contract. An agent cannot give legal advice on how buyers take title. And also an agent cannot tell you to sign something. Okay. Now, escrow companies have to remain impartial, which just means neutral and ultimately follow the purchase contract. That's it. So there's also this thing called an earnest money deposit. And that's just where the buyer puts uh, at a certain amount of money into the escrow which is one to three percent of the home purchase price and this just shows that the buyer is serious about purchasing the house now in southern california there are bilateral escrow instructions and they have them given uh, jointly to the buyer and the seller before the beginning of escrow also these are normally split split between uh, 50 50 between the buyer and the seller now in northern california the instructions are usually not signed until one or two days just before the close of escrow also service fees are usually paid by the buyer and then there's this thing called an interpleader action, which is important to know. This is an action initialed by the escrow company. Um, anytime the buyer and the seller are unable to resolve the dispute, this steps into uh, like the closing of escrow when they file an interpleader. And this is when the escrow cannot make a unilateral decision on where this money goes to, so they just throw it into the court system. From there, the court will decide. Escrow companies need to get a demand notice from the title insurance company, also known as lender statements. So for the seller side of the equation, what escrow does is uh, they look at the preliminary, preliminary title report, which reviews the public records of the home and the contacts, they contact each lien and get demand notices from them to pay off all those liens to ensure that they can deliver a clean and clear title to the buyer. So that's on the seller side of the equation. On the buyer side of the equation, the escrow, what escrow basically does for them is the buyer tries to obtain financing for the house they want for, you know, that they want to purchase. So then the lender has to approve that loan and the buyer signs those documents and then gives the documents over to the escrow company to have those get signed. And then there's this thing called liquidated damages. This is the last thing I promise. This means when the parties agree beforehand on what the remedies will be if there's a breach. So if the buyer breaches the contract, the seller can keep the deposit. That's what this means. If this is initialed by both parties and the buyer is going to live on the property, the maximum amount the buyer will lose is either 3% uh, of the purchase price or whichever is less. Now, if the buyer does not decide to initial liquidated damages and the seller does, the seller can get the buyer for whatever they want. And if the buyer is not going to live there and it's an investment property, the buyer will lose his full deposit because an investor is presumed to know better. Now, never advise a client on whether or not they should sign that because that's not up to you. That's up to them. Also, you should never have a unilateral initial um, 
on liquidated damages because either way they they have they have to both agree to it or not or else it's just going to be an ambiguous dispute so with that being said that concludes this video it's real short and sweet on basically what escrow is um if you guys like this one thumbs up subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next one all right peace